Hey, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, whatever your time is, wherever you are joining us from. As you know, this uh, program, people join from all over the world. It's nice to see your wonderful visit faces again one more time. Last year was wonderful. And uh, this is the first time we are meeting this year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to the team. Happy New Year to everyone Happy that year. joined us today. Wishing you a very, very prosperous year. So today, our program is, uh, we have brought it closer to the people, to everybody to be able to participate. I will be walking along with you today, every step of the way, moderating this program. And with me is the wonderful team that has been together for close to two years now. Thank God we are increasing. We have not lost anybody. Praise God. Please, as we are starting as usual, remember your phone. Please put your phone on silent. You can do that now in the next one, two seconds. I'm also doing my... Remember to put your phone on silent. Remember, if you have comments, because we are making this very interactive, if you have comments, use the emoji to raise up your hand. Because unfortunately, we cannot see everybody's hand. So use the emoji to raise up your hand. Do not interrupt. Be civil in your interactions. This is a platform where we come up with solutions to issues on no oil export. Today is Naira Volatility, Strategies for Businesses to Stay Afloat. Who is our main speaker today? Our main speaker today is none other than our convener, the convener of this program is going to be our main speaker for the day. And who is this person? He is no other person than Femi Oyede. For those that may be wondering who is Femi Oyede, or if you don't know him very well, here is Femi Oyede for you. You can see his picture from your end, I believe. Can you see him? Yes, we can see him. Okay. Yes, I can see him. Okay, Femi Boyede is the convener of this program. And equally is a CITP international trade consultant. He's an enterprise development strategist. His experience has spanned private sector management, policy formulation, advocacy, and organizational improvement. He has extensive experience in the international trade domain, passionate in export business development and trade promotion, proactive in public private discussions on business environment, enterprise development, and trade reforms, travel to numerous regions around the globe to support the exchange of products and services, and is the chairman of Coenuna Global Services Inc. Canada, as well as chief executive officer and lead consultant of Coenuna Ventures Limited Nigeria. He's made passive, a positive impact in Nigeria, no oil export conferences, exhibitions, and awards, uh, served in the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, FMITI, and, uh, GTA Trade Enthusiast in Canada. GTA means Greater Toronto Area. Femboyede is a diplomatic, is diplomatic and speaks many languages, including English, French, Hausa, Lingala, Nupe, and Yoruba. He has hands-on experience in managing export development programs and accomplished in expanding business sector in uh, business service markets. 
and uh, Nigerian Canadian is a Nigerian Canadian as well as a member of the Nigeria and Canada Business Network, and he equally promotes trade relations between Canada, the United States, and Africa with a focus on Nigeria. Please let us welcome Femi Boyede to welcome everybody officially and to also start his presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Lady Kay. Um, I, I think it's uh, opposite also to say Happy New Year, since this is our first uh, time of uh, meeting together this year. Um, on behalf of the world's best team, I um, join in uh, welcoming you to today's um, webinar. Um, obviously, responding to what they will say the state of the nation. And um, I believe that we will have a wonderful time. And um, it's just um, opposite also to say a very big thank you to everybody uh, for staying with us these past two years. And uh, the fact that um, we're still uh, going means that you all mean well to contribute to um, to changing the narrative and uh, giving the business sector uh, more impetus to not only trade globally, but to trade profitably and um, in a more easy environment. I see um, one of my age-long uh, co-warriors, Dr. Johnny Semede, um, and um, I say a very big uh, welcome. I'm happy that we have a few uh, new uh, joiners today. Um, some of them, I know the story, and I believe that not only will they uh, benefit from uh, this uh, um, event today, but we also generally will uh, uh, we will uh, learn a lot from their experiences. Uh, I'm not preempting the selection of those who will share experiences, but in, in case they don't uh, uh, win the lotto, I will uh, I will uh, leave some of my own minutes and uh, call upon such uh, people. In any case, uh, let's get back to business, and I wish you um, a very fruitful, productive uh, one hour or one and a half hours together today. Once again, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Boyede. Now we're going to the main part of why we are here today, which is a presentation by Femi Boyede. However, we everyone as are joining, please go on the chat, introduce yourself, share all the information. You are free to share your email, your phone numbers, your company, your name. Um, we are not here just because we want to play, but because we equally want to network. So if you feel comfortable, please put your information in the chat for you. Thank you. Mr. Boyede, you can continue. You are muted. Thank you very much, Lily uh, Kay. And um, I really would have wanted to uh, share a video clip that um, I saw about uh, an hour ago. Um, I tried to bring it into our box. I've not succeeded, but I'm very sure that uh, several people here would have seen it. I will, however, try to summarize what it is all about. As of this moment, globally, it is a trying time for businesses. It's been uh, trying, and there's a lot of... Uh, um, anxiety out there that the world is likely to be facing another economic recession. And so uh, many countries are already preparing and strategizing to 
face uh, the impending recession headlong. Nigeria is not left out. So whatever is happening out there, um, like, uh, Nigeria is uh, feeling the impact. And I believe that uh, today we will be approaching one specific uh, aspect of uh, the economic life of Nigeria that seems to have gotten to everybody, and I mean every citizen of this uh, country. I do remember an age-old adage that says, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And I believe that everybody here today is one of the tough. And uh, by the time you live here, you will then uh, get going. And I believe that uh, that's what we will do. So what that, uh, it, it's actually a TikTok uh, video clip. The man goes to the market. Uh, he has his 100 naira in his hand. So he goes to a guy selling gari and says, please, I want one cup of gari. The guy looks at his hand and sees 100 naira. He says, no, um, my gari is 150 naira per cup. So the guy goes to the uh, immediate next door, asks that guy, okay, I beg, how much be your gari? That one says it's 200 naira. And he says, ah, 200 naira. Okay. So he goes back to the previous uh, seller and wants to pay him uh, the 150 naira. In the space of the 30 seconds, the man says, ah, no, my gari don't now 250 naira. He said, ah, what's wrong with you guys? He goes back to the other one. I said, the thing don't become 300 naira. So all in the space of two minutes, the guy had no choice than to put his hand back into his pocket and buy at 300 naira because he doesn't know if he goes back to the other man, it will probably have jumped to 400 naira. That's a description of how volatile the Nigerian uh, currency has been. And because Nigeria is not an island and uh, trades globally, we thought um, a talking trade uh, team that it is uh, just uh, timely for us to take a more than a costly look at the volatility of the Naira. I'm going to be um, speaking to a few slides just to put the discussion in perspective, but to also, uh, before I do that, uh, invite uh, your active participation so that um, whatever we um, do today will produce a very robust uh, position that we will, as usual, share with the relevant uh, authorities in the hope that uh, they will be put uh, to the kind of use they've always put our recommendations to. So um, please give me a moment. Let me uh, share my screen. OK, so um, we are talking about the volatility of the Naira strategies for businesses to stay afloat. The idea is. While we want to talk international trade, we do know that trade also includes the domestic environment. So um, this presentation will not be limited to international trade alone, but uh, we'll also try to see uh, what happens uh, locally. So here we can see that uh, it's been a kind of a battle, really, that we continue to see with economic challenges, with local businesses closing down. Multinational and uh, international companies are relocating. This slide here uh, gives a best high view about uh, the rising inflation rates that has now come to its highest in uh, over 27 years. As of January 2024, uh, the country's inflation rate uh, rose very, very close to 
30%. And uh, with this uh, um, inflation rate and the uh, volatility we are talking about, this is uh, already beginning to manifest uh, the uh, Nigerian populace is now experiencing the lowest purchasing power. Um, the economy is almost becoming irrelevant uh, internationally. Um, of course, every day now you wake up to see that uh, the uh, um, uh, the nation, the economic space, has a much higher demand than supply of uh, the United States dollars, which of course is the currency of uh, international trade here in Nigeria, which so uh, a huge backlog of uh, forex to uh, for the uh, country's administrators to meet. You will see here how the US dollar to uh, Nigerian Naira chart has gone for, I mean, for as, um, as high as almost I think in the next slide, you also see that it's gone to almost uh, um, two times what it was less than a year ago. February 20, uh, let's, say, uh, let's start from May 2023, Naira exchanged for 464 at uh, the uh, um, official uh, market, 765 in uh, the black market. July 2023, two months later, Naira went to 760 um, and very closely at the, that's on the official market and 780 at the black market. September, two months later, it was 779 at the official uh, window and 1,000 uh, Naira to a dollar. January 2024, then the skyrocketing began. 1,193. Um, at the official exchange rate, 1,435. And February, just a few days ago, 1,709 officially. Let's note that in uh, May 2023, it was just 464. So officially, the Naira had uh, devalued or uh, moved um, so high almost uh, uh, almost uh, four times what it was less than a year earlier. And in the black market, it was 1,851. Some actually uh, reported the Naira going for as long as, I mean, as high as 2,100 at a point in the black market. The official uh, window was not spread at all because within this period, there were days when the black market rate was even cheaper than the official exchange rate. And um, some put this to what we call uh, technically the floating uh, Naira so that it's allowed to float. The impact of that, of course, directly is unpredictability. And businesses don't thrive in, in a, an unpredictable uh, business environment. Of course, part of the effects, the December's consumer price index showed that food inflation rose to 33.93%. This is from the NBS. Food costs grew by 40% between December 2023 and February 2024. Intracity fares had dropped in Nigeria surged by 48.03 year on year to 963 in January. And on an annual comparison, the fares witnessed a significant increase of 48.03%. Uh, Air transportation probably was the worst. As of um, May, June 2023, you could fly from Abuja to Lagos one hour. Most distances in Nigeria, air distances are covered in one hour. Uh, by May last year, you could fly 
pro um, Abuja Lagos or Abuja uh, Lagos Kano for as low as depending on how early you bought your flight your ticket you could get it for forty thousand naira thereabouts some even lower I think there was twenty seven thousand and uh, today you'll be lucky to do the one hour flight at one hundred and twenty thousand naira. It rose to as high as 250 naira a few weeks back for a one-way ticket. And of course, because we are in an international environment, that also impacted international travel from Nigeria. And um, very, very quickly, Nigeria became the uh, country where it was most expensive to buy an international ticket. Again. If we went, if we decide to go deeper, you will see that other countries were actually feeding from this volatility in Nigeria to the extent that people will travel by road. People going to New York will travel by road to Kotonou or to Accra to go and buy their ticket and fly. And when they are coming back, they go to Accra or Kotonou and uh, uh, truck back by road to Nigeria. So part of the effects, gas and petrochemicals. A lot of homes actually uh, started going back to charcoal, making the local price of charcoal higher, more expensive than the export price of this commodity that was uh, almost uh, not interesting, not attractive, non-existent in Nigeria. Today, uh, this last week, that has been the major topic, the price of cement. Well, cement being the major component in uh, construction. When as cement prices skyrocketed, so also did prices of all other items in uh, housing and construction. Daily essentials are not spared. And I, I borrow a word here from uh, Dr. Tokwe Fasuba, um, who described what is happening especially in the consumer products uh, industry as uh, shrinkflation. I fell in love with that. Shrinkflation, he described as the uh, practice that we all see now, where the price of a 450 gram uh, tin of uh, Bonvita or Milo has gone up to 2,500 Naira, uh, from probably 800 Naira. It's about 2,500, 2,600 Naira now. But when you open the tin, even though the container says 450 gram, what you actually meet inside will be somewhere around 300 grams. So it's shrinking and uh, it's becoming alarming. So the overall effect of all of this is that it is becoming more and more difficult for Nigerian businesses to survive and for the owners of these businesses to even be able to eat. I don't know if one meal is square uh, because they would usually say three square meals. I I used to think it was three uh, triangular meals. But now whether it is triangular or rectangular, it's very difficult now to put food on the table. So um, we try not to be doomsday prophets. We just presented in that first part the actual current realities in Nigeria and how difficult it is for businesses to navigate. But remember, like I said earlier on, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Here, everybody thinks, especially those who talk in favor of non-oil exports as the gold mine. Everybody thinks that the devalued Naira means that the exporter earns much, much more in Naira than they used to earn. And I said, nothing can be further from the truth. 
that's the reason why we thought uh, that it's very, very important to explain this um, in the course of this webinar. And to do that, to illustrate that, um, there's a case study at the end of this presentation where we try to capture the terminal market, the destination market price of some of Nigerian products. It hasn't really changed. One kilo of gari in um, Toronto in 2019 still remains the price that it is even in 2024. But when you exported gari, I think I should just uh, first go to that slide and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. So in 2019, um, one kilo of uh, gari was uh, 75 cents in downtown Toronto. 2020, 75 cents per kg. 2021, 80 cents per kg. 2024, it is still 80 to 83 cents per kg. That's what the exporter uh, will uh, sell when he has uh, made all the wahala to get it down to the Canadian market. So this man buys his gari either in Ijebu or in Oyo. In 2019, that gari that um, he sold for 75 uh, cents per kg was actually about... Um, I think it was 173 naira per kg in 2019, 173, 183 thereabouts. As of December 2023, it was 660 naira per kg, or 33,000 naira per bag. January 2024, it went to 760 naira per kg, 38,000 a bag. February 2024, it is 1,100 naira per kg or 55,000 naira per bag. So if you look at the cost of that the exporter procures the product at in Nigeria, and remember all these are X production site, X location. The price of truck from one place to the other in Nigeria has also gone as high as all of this. Even the loaders and offloaders have hiked their prices four or five times. So to stock the container is much more expensive. If you now look at this scenario, would we agree that a Nigerian exporter is actually breaking even when he gets to the international market where it is described as a fierce and a competitive battle, economic battleground? I would say the answer is no. So let's go back with um, what we already said earlier on the weak era, high inflation, low purchasing power, low wages, unemployment is increasing. So in the face of all this, what do we think needs to be done? And um, we've tried here to strike a balance between what the businesses themselves need to do and what uh, government needs to do to uh, support businesses. So for businesses, we think that it is the time to now explore the option of export clustering or cooperative exports. India adopted this almost 20 something years ago. Um, South Africa, I think it was 2005 that I was in uh, Cape Town for uh, the day when they were launching 
the export clusters uh, concept in uh, Cape Town. And that for them has remained a very, very viral, I mean, very, very active uh, strategy. So we think that it is time for exporters to synergize, to up, uh, scale synergy above energy and cooperation above competition. If you do not have the resources to fill a container, look for five, six, seven other exporters and do a sharing, what they call groupage. The cost to ship one container remains the same. So you might spread this among yourselves. And by building such synergy, you actually are also building the confidence of your final importer. Of course, uh, prudent management, I mean, uh, you don't need any profit to, uh, to preach this to you at this time, because it is now time to focus on cost, uh, cost optimization measures to mitigate the impact of inflation and to reduce the cost of staying in business. Resource allocation needs to be more efficient. If you need at this time to rearrange your shifts such that eight people can now cover the job that 20 people were doing in other uh, clients, I will again go back to Canada as example. I thought they were crazy. I thought it would not be possible. But when COVID-19 affected uh, the global supply chain uh, system, a lot of Canadian businesses decided to introduce the work from home strategy. Yes, the cost of procuring the equipments were high initially, but these were costs that were one off. And today, I think that a higher percentage of businesses are operating the work uh, from home, thereby reducing the cost of rent, cost of electricity, and every other thing that uh, add up to be the overhead. So prudent management becomes very, very uh, important at this point. So you need also to uh, adapt to your customers' uh, changing preferences. Let me go back a little bit to something that happened uh, uh, that is actually very current. The Gambia International Trade Fair is on. Two years ago, we uh, helped to develop a concept that Nigeria Export Promotion Council and SMIDAN bought into and we were able to take about 30 Nigerian businesses to the Gambia with support from both agencies, Smidan and NEPC. At that time, a return of a ticket to Banjul was 560,000 Naira. One kilo of uh, uh, cargo of luggage was 1,500 Naira. 2024, one and a half years later, because it was October 2022, 2024, the return ticket had gone to 1,455,000 economic class. Cost of cargo package had gone up to 8,000 Naira, 8,000 from 1,500. So it was practically impossible for a startup or a nano micro. Uh, even small enterprise to take anything to Gambia, which opened as a very, very fertile market for Nigeria products. And where if they got there, it was just not possible to break even, not to talk of thinking of profit. So as of this moment, the trade fair is on, there is no Nigerian pavilion. But two Nigerian women braved the odds spoke to some other uh, colleagues, especially those who had uh, gone there before and known just how vital that market was. So they pulled their resources together and bought two exhibition booths. Those two exhibition booths now, uh, with uh, uh, staffing from these two women, 
they are the ones that are selling on behalf of about 15 other exporters. That's the advantage of cooperation. So we need to um, adapt to consumers' preferences so, uh, to minimize loss, uh, especially rejection not on quality, but on the fact that you are giving them the wrong of, uh, uh, product. Cultivate customer confidence. That is extremely, extremely important. And there is no university where you go to learn this. It's just the soft, soft things. If you are to deliver goods to somebody and for one reason or the other, maybe power um, challenge and what have you, you cannot. Please pick up your phone and call the person. This applies to both domestic and international trade. Explain what the situation is. In doing so, you are shoring up that person's confidence in your efficiency. I used this way back in 1996 to 1999 as export manager in Stanmark, a Cadbury-owned uh, company in Nigeria. And I can tell you that for those three and a half years, Stanmark Coco always attracted at least $250 per ton higher price than any other cocoa processing company in Nigeria at that time. The simple reason was not that we delivered 100% of the time, but that we let our customers know if for any reason there was any of those uh, parameters that were agreed in the export contract that we were not going to be able to meet those quality standards, we will explain to them, please, for so, 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 so reason, FFA will not be 3%. It will probably be 3.5%. And everybody understood this, and uh, we became the better for it. Whether you are a local uh, player or an exporter, this will work for you. So, what is uh, what should government do in this instance? Everybody who is conversant with uh, the Nigerian uh, news space would have followed just how much manufacturers and producers are groaning, groaning so much, so much because of the. Uh, effect of this uh, inconsistent and volatile uh, exchange rate. So it is important because Nigeria is a government-led economy, it is important that government becomes deliberate in supporting exports. I think that uh, it is time for our economic thinkers to go a step higher than recommending hands out and welfare and all those welfare interventions and actually focus on support for production. I gave an example here, the export expansion grant, which government, this administration is yet to even uh, pay a dime out of, and there is a backlog there. And um, I can't remember where I was, I think it was at the PBAT, summit where I was giving the example of the illustration. Government owes Nigerian uh, exporters about 260 or maybe 300 billion. Worst case scenario, 300 billion naira in the backlog of export expansion grant dating back to 2016. Now, these are monies funds that go directly into reducing the cost of production, reducing the unit cost of exporting from Nigeria, addressing issues such as the high cost of registration with NAVDAC and other agencies, of sinking their own boreholes because water supply is inconsistent, of generating their own power because uh, the national grid 
will fail them. That's what export expansion grant is applied to and will have an immediate impact. But if we were to aggregate the, um, uh, the uh, uh, amount that this government has voted and uh, and uh, this, uh, 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 dispersed, I, I, I was looking for a better word there than to say that they were dispersing it, but it looks to me like this dispersal. On uh, uh, 200 billion today to list impoverished families, 500 billion there. Uh, all this um, government itself finds it difficult to even uh, identify the persons or the families that qualify for this. And that's the reason for the hue and cry in the Ministry of uh, is it Humanitarian Affairs, where the monies find their way either into human pockets or uh, bellies of snakes and other reptiles. We think that not only the export expansion grant, but at least five or six of the other incentives that exist by law under the Export Incentives and Miscellaneous Act need to now be revamped and properly funded so that export will help Nigeria out of the scarce foreign exchange that makes the Naira to be uh, volatile. The trade from infrastructure in Nigeria today is grossly inadequate. That's stating the obvious. It is time for government to focus on activation of common facility centers for domestic businesses. That will help the concept that we were proposing to uh, producers themselves to uh, look at cooperation rather than uh, doing things all alone. So, and we think that it is time to borrow from the Asian Tigers. The Asian Tigers in uh, 1993 World Bank report has it that they went deliberate and intentional. The governments did everything. So government must now look at production, manufacturing, trade, whether domestic or international, as the solution to the volatility of the Naira, and therefore go very, very deliberate and intentional to ensure that businesses are supported to not only stay afloat, break even, but also to make profit in what uh, is a continuously challenging environment. Okay, this is part of uh, what would have made somebody to uh, start uh, wondering what is happening. And that is one of the areas that is most, most volatile. Yesterday, just yesterday alone, the CBN reviewed the exchange rate for uh, import duties in Nigeria three times. This results in unpredictability. And there's just no way that any business can plan. And once you cannot plan, you want to go to a more stable environment. That um, accounts for why most of those companies that have relocated have done so, and why many more are shutting their doors. And I want to end this uh, uh, presentation by uh, saying that inevitably, challenging times have arrived affecting Nigeria and its businesses, whether they operate domestically or focus on exports. It is crucial for businesses to adopt innovative approaches while the government needs to be more intentional and deliberate in providing support to ensure their sustainability. I thank you all very much. It took uh, quite more than uh, the 25 minutes we wanted, but it was important, I think, to uh, let all of us be on the same page. Thank you once again. If you want to contribute, please signify by raising up your hand. We believe this is a 
supposed to be interactive. I can see some comments. Madam Bosulari is clapping. You want to say something, Madam Shulari? Okay. Um, before you, I see TV Ore. Your hand is up. Please omit yourself. If your camera is working, we would love to see your face. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I would have loved to share my camera, just that I'm holding a baby. I hope people can bear with me for now. We would love to have babies. They are All the right. future. So the baby will be hearing too and contributing. <laughs> Okay. Now we have seen baby, we are not hearing your voice. <laughs> oh my god. That changed. Okay, so we hear you, we hear you now. We hear you. All right, all right. Please let, let's just work with um the audio for now, please. No problem. It's all right. Great, great. Yeah, um, I want to very much uh appreciate the speaker. He really uh mentioned the very obvious realities on ground. Uh you know, my own question is that since we are very much familiar with our problems, uh, what effort are we making as uh, businesses and uh, governments to mitigate our challenges? Because at times what I know we to be very uh, common with is uh, this idea of identifying problems, but not really, really taking those steps that will uh, bring the solutions, the needed solutions. Okay, uh, considering the issues of uh, prices remaining the same in, uh, uh, in the diaspora, that is in the international market, um, that means for me, from my own little knowledge of economics, I would say um, the demand there is, is not uh, really much then we have a demand down here that we are struggling to even meet from um, the look of things. But then I often wonder, is it really the fact that we do not have enough uh, to uh, meet our current uh, demand at home? So honestly, I'm really, really wondering if we really have a, a way out of this present situation. That's my say for now, thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution. Um, Mr. The next person we have is a uh, is Simethe John. Oh. I call him uh, our old soldier. He's with us, he's been with us right from the beginning of this program. Please unmute yourself, John is Simethe. Okay. Yes, omit yourself while he's uh, trying to omit himself. Okay, go ahead, please omit yourself. We can see your video, Johnny Simide. Looks like you know. never shall be on mute up to now. I, I cannot hear you. How are you? Is it my turn? <laughs> Is it my turn? It is your yes. turn. It's yes, turn. they'll be calling you. It's my turn. All right. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon <laughs> or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year once more. Thank you. What we are seeing here is not new to any of us who are grandfathers in this business. When this situation happened in Brazil, they were able to look inward. It happened in Thailand and all that. But we will not continue to blame ourselves. Because some of the people in position, some of them are not abreast, they are not even at home. About four or five years ago, people came up and said, we should be doing export in Naira. And I was saying, it is a good idea when a country is producing. But when you are not producing, and you that you are not even in export, you tell us to import or export in Naira in the sense that these are people who will send middlemen to us and begin to use our, because Nigeria is the country where you can enter the farm, go, go and meet men and women, and begin to buy cocoa at 
less than the cost of production. So what we are going to suffer is that they will force us to sign agreement like the Ijabu Gari gave about. If it was 2,000 Naira or 2,000 dollars per ton, by today, how much will you use it? Because in law, you cannot sign an agreement and run out of it. CBI came up and they were saying ROT 200. I questioned, people gave me names that the CBI governor is talking. So the truth of the matter is that what can save the Naira is production, not borrowing, not looking for market from countries that are not even members of the UN. So my final contribution is simple. Most of the things we have in this country are imported. And we are getting little or nothing from the EPZ. We are getting little or nothing from the export, from, from services. And we are getting little or nothing from the Exim Bank that are supposed to gain their export. So how are we now to uh, reduce this pressure? The only thing is production. And if you are not producing, you will continue to. The last line, there was a young man said, it's only when the market is saturated. There is nothing like that, that the market must be saturated. If you want the market to be saturated, why in the first place do you sign ECOWAS agreement? Why, what business do you have in AFTA? What of the WTO on trade facilitation? CBN came up, they banned about 43 items. And they did not even look backwards on backward integration and developing local capacity. Then about two, three, about two months ago, they came up to reverse this thing. And the private tech sector is not talking. So what direction do we have? We are running a country of over 200 million people. We cannot get five export managers. God bless you all. Thank you. We don't expect anything from uh, the fireworks we get from you all the time. Thank you for the contribution. And uh, Madam Bosun, please unmute yourself. Good evening to the whole house. Good evening, mm -hmm. uh, Lady K. Good evening, Mr. Femi Boyede, Dr. John, and everyone on this call. Good evening. It's indeed a pleasure to be joining you again today. Thank you so much for your job. Well done, Mr. Boyede. Ambassador Boyede. <laughs> so, yes. So, so the truth is, in fact, everything you have reeled out today, it was as it was doing me yesterday. Let me use that colloquial English while I was with channels. Unfortunately, you know, just about 10 minutes interview, one couldn't do justice. But the truth is, without preempting what you're going to say to the first uh, person who spoke, he said, what are we going to do? And then two, I think he's also believing that uh, we have not satisfied the local, uh, we have not met the local needs. So it's almost like, why export? The truth, recently what just happened was that because of the crash in the Naira rate, people within West Africa and, and those surrounding us were coming to Nigeria to just take away things. Even when farmers have run out of the farm that we don't even have enough. So because they were buying so low, they all came in and they were buying and I don't know what our people did to stop it. And so it now came to this level and then they are now trying to stop the thing. That's when you now read that people are trying to stop vehicles that are going to Niger and most other places. Having said all that, I said yesterday, there is no way. I mean, anybody will tell me the local uh, consumption have not been satis satisfied. The truth is, there are over 1 million processors in this country that are looking outside to sell. And I was asking yesterday, how many people in agribusiness today can get uh, space in the market to sell? How many will get space in departmental stores to sell? How many can sell here? But that's why the um, export business opens door for them to be able to do business. And then for those who are even selling locally, they can now expand their, I mean, their production facility and then economies of scale begin to play and then prices can come down. So please don't ever listen to anybody who is saying the local market is still there. It has not been satisfied. When you go into export, not, then too, I mean, 
uh, thirdly, it brings effects. There's so much effects we're looking for. Yeah. So the truth is, the truth is, and then let me also talk about the Gambia he talked about. I just try to do a little mathematics now. I have looked at CFA for those who are into CFA on that axis. CFA is 0017, 0.0017 to a dollar. So, and I just did a rough calculation. When I was in Dakar last year, my 100 grams product that I was selling for 1,005 1, 1, CFA, if I convert it to Naira today, it's 700. Then it was 1,750. And I was happy to go back to that axis to go and sell in CFA. But if I convert that money to Naira today, it is 714. It's that bad. Uh, but what I now did was, uh, okay, if I sell, let's say I still sell the 1,005 CFA, then I convert the money back to dollar before I come back. Then I may now be getting, uh, if at 1,4, maybe 3,5. So that may just make a little sense. So that if I go, then I need to convert all my, but with this one now, so what if the dollar now comes down and like Mr. Boy, they said, it's so difficult to plan if you don't want to run, if one does not want to run a bizarre in the head. Because even me now, I'm not even doing anything. It's only if anybody calls me now that they want to buy. I'm not, I'm not looking for any customer. It's that bad because I can't even think of anything to do. I wake up I don't have anything in my head that I want to do. Before that, you have, lined up, you have lined up a lot of things that you want to do. Now it's so difficult to plan for anything. So please, what do we do? <laughs> it's difficult. Bulk of what we can do lies with the government to be deliberate and be intentional with export business. If we are, then I will also see talk of standardization because if we don't have the standards, we cannot sell. So we need to look at all these things, but bulk of this race, and when government officials will still be telling you, government has done enough, what do we want? And so it now makes the matter to tire me because like I told them, they will pay, the light he uses in his office is not paying for it. When he goes for oversight functions, government pays for it. So he collects all his salary to go and eat. But for businesses, they use all the money they make to provide those amenities and the little they have can barely make them succeed. God will help us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, as usual, for your wonderful contribution. Uh, Madam Omolara Akunchi is next. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, ma Madam K. Thank you. I'm sorry I joined the meeting, I mean, the discussion very late because of some challenges. But I would like to raise two issues. One on the, um, you know, the presentation of, by Prof. You know, it's quite uh, interesting, quite detailed. The issue of international trade, cost of clearing in Nigeria. I think um, we should begin to look at uh, the um, custom duties and clearing, not just uh, on a one site dimension, but in between the, the importer and the exporter. Because the um, ICC rule talked about CIF, FOB. And I know in Nigeria that we don't have enough of ship that we can use to trade with, to, to carry luggages in and out. So if we are bringing in FOB uh, goods, uh, carriage, it has its own cost. If it is uh, uh, CIF, which is uh, uh, you know great insurance and uh, insurance and freight, it has its own cost. So I, I want to believe that Central Bank need to sit together with customs to be able to iron this issue out because the way it is so structured now in that policy, we are going to give advantage to the ships that come from outside. You know they would carry goods to Nigeria and take away our foreign exchange, as it were. That is the way it works. We need to tell a uh, central bank to review that uh, um, circular to the extent that it will be as an advantage to us. My second point is uh, the issue of financing and investment. I want to thank my Madam Bosun, you know, in all she's doing. We, we should be looking at the opportunities that are in, 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 in financing and investment. 
we have a, we have a, an agreement with China. China is uh, you know is 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 you no know, China Nigeria relationship is an opportunity for us to uh, engage them in taking our commodities because they have a large population and and they they have given up a free uh, free way to exchange naira with uh, rumumbi and i don't know why we are not taking that advantage most of our goods go go to uh, to, to to china and i want to tell you that there there are, there are a lot of indirect uh, exportation of our cassava to China, and they will process it and re-export it to us. So we, we need to look at that dimension, you know, seriously. Those are my two points, and I thank uh, Professor Aboyade for Aboyade for the uh, very well uh, put together paper. Thank you. Okay, maybe before he comes up, okay, uh, before I lose sight of uh, those comments, let me just say. Uh, quickly, in response to some of the uh, points that have been made, I agree entirely with uh, Dr. Isemede that it is time for production, production, production. To the extent of even advocating uh, for government to sit with producers, traders, and exporters to help government to manufacture um, foreign exchange for this country because they have the capacity to. I give the example of those 30 women that we took to Gambia in uh, October 2022. In four days, they had manufactured 185,000 US dollars in that they, they held. It's GT Bank Banjul that helped a lot of them to change the last to dollar that they brought back home. So I am talking uh, what I saw, not a projection. So imagine having 10 times that number of people. That means that you would have had more than a million US dollars coming into the country and into the economy. Exporters do have the capacity to manufacture. Like Dr. Isemede said, it is not time for borrowing. It is not sustainable. Once you have allocated and, and shared what you borrow, of course, remember also at the back of your mind that there is the interest element in borrowing. And lest we run the risk of borrowing against the future of generations yet unborn, it is time to focus, encourage, deliberately support production, manufacturing, and export. Then somebody um, talked about um, why do we need to export? What are we going to do? Because the, there is a deliberate market. Export production is different from local production. There is a company out there in Banju that has existed since, um, they said, since uh, 1993 that does greenhouse agriculture. 98% of what it produces goes to the export market. Only 2%, and those 2% are the outputs that are considered not up to the export the standard to be exported. That is what they sell in the local market. But uh, uh, what do you call it? The Gambian market and the surrounding countries, Mali, Guinea, uh, Senegal, they can use some of these vegetables and fruits that are produced in the greenhouses. So there is there needs to be an understanding that it is time to let the wheat grow, let the chaff grow. We can produce sustainable uh, sustainably. Export does not in any way affect local production. The standards are different. And let me just step down a little bit because I think uh, uh, Ms. Andali is back.
This webinar is brought to you by Talking Trade and Investment Global, Tatrick. We are live on Facebook at Export Digest. Kindly follow our Facebook page. Also, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter at Export Digest TV. We go to Adamu Gambo. Adamu Gambo, please unmute uh, yourself. Uh, good evening, Lady K, our president, mm -hmm. uh, Femi Boyde, and everyone good on this call. Nice good to see you again. Uh, uh, thank you for this uh, series that is continuous on monthly visits. You're welcome. Yes. So, um, uh, I'm happy this month we have uh, chosen one of the tropical issues that is affecting our country as a whole. This issue of uh, foreign exchange volatility, uh, volatility, which is affecting our business in all ramifications. I'm so much impressed with the solution so far provided by our president, Tony uh, Boyedi, and then the discussions or contribution from uh, Madam Boson and Omolara, Lara, all they have uh, said well. But uh, what I would like to add is, yes, as uh, Master Boye they said, we need to increase our manufacturing, most essentially exportable commodities, either in terms of processing or manufacturing. But there is one lack of it that we need to look into. That is the lower segment of the value chain. That is uh, the production level. We always neglect these farmers, unless and until they produce. That is when we have enough that we can uh, process and export. Now, if we look at uh, what is currently happening globally, most essentially, if you tie it down to Nigeria, you will see that uh, there is a high demand for soya beans, uh, sesame, uh, sesame seeds, and some other commodities. Now, if we look at what is the total output in this country, what is the global demand? Now, for us to increase or to get more of our market share at the global level, we need to increase this production. How do we increase it? We are not going to increase production simply by enhancing the processing capacity or manufacturing capacity of all the places. Rather, what we need to do, how do we boost the total uh, output from the raw material base. Now, if we could be able to do that, it means that uh, instead of, let's say, exporting, let's say, 1 million metric tons of soya beans, let's target uh, um, 1.5 million. And then how do we achieve that? Who are the major producers? How do we intervene such that um, we can enhance their production? Yes. But Boy, then you talk about the uh, export expansion grant. That is good. That is going to boost the morale of the exporters. And then uh, so also the processors. That is processors of uh, export uh, goods. But where yeah. are they going to get their um, uh, raw material? We need to also have a kind of deliberate action around that uh, value chain so that we have a law. So some are saying that we don't have to do enough for the local consumption, calculus of export. We need to balance the two. The two has to be balanced. So that by doing that, we satisfy our local demand. At the same time, we have enough to export. That is one. And then two, uh, in the course of uh, intervening in this low-level production, that is at the lower segment of the value chain, we need to be strategic. What are the most exportable commodities? Okay, let's say cocoa, ginger, soya beans, sesame seeds, abyssal flour, and so on. Where are the target areas or target locations where these crops are mostly produced? We identify this area. Which kind of support are we going to give? You need a kind of target? Do they need some kind of extension workers? And then at the same time, we need to also enlighten this, our um, farmers on the good agricultural practice of it. 
such that whatever we are producing is going to meet with the international standards. For instance, let me give you an example. Uh, when we come to understand that uh, have this food is, uh, is under high demand, so what we do, where are the areas that produce this habitual flower? Then we reach out to our own communities, friends and associates. We buy seed, high quality seed of habitual flower. We give it out free to our local communities. And today we are monitoring, we have, have reported reasonable success in that particular area. So, uh, whatever we are going to grab, we also need to look down to the lower segment of the value chain. Uh, not only on the machineries or the processing, because unless and until we have the raw material to process, there's nothing we can export. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your wonderful contribution and for joining us today. You are clear now. Go ahead. Okay, it's better. Yes. Uh, Mr. Femi Boedi for this this uh, webinar. Off to have time when this has been okay. Maybe I just I, 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 I that's the, I'm clear always because this has been my refresher course. Same way this presenting, and I'm also always happy that I'm part of this uh, event. Uh, you see, when when I had when I had the first, I mean, the topic for this discussion, uh, the volatility of volatility of uh, of the Naira strategy for businesses to stay afloat. What came to my mind immediately was South Africa. Today that. Run is uh, when we came here, run was just uh, 43 naira uh, to one rand versus naira to one rand, and that's a lot of problem, right? And uh, so, so what, what uh, I think from the topic, from on, my own understanding, is what are the strategies that ca business can adopt to remain afloat in doing businesses? And I think one strategy, Mr. Bouide, uh, Mr. Bouide has brought up very strongly and i think that's one of the best strategy for any businessman or for any businesses is partnership or local partnership with stakeholders speaking to uh, the, the like of uh, for example and taking these businesses to places like gambia south africa where you can now develop partnership and strategy to make you stay afloat in the midst of currency volatility that is one strategy i think of then the second one, I think, which is very critical, uh, is how do we, how do businesses set up risk management, um, uh, what, what, what do you put now, strategy, risk management strategy. You develop a strategy so that when there's an issue in one, I mean, you develop a robust plan that will help you identify potential risks. Now we know that the Naira is a potential risk to a business. So what are the risk strategies that you have, you've designed aside to ensure that your businesses remain afloat? Then, of course, uh i think sometimes I, I i i somewhat i think someone talked a lady spoke about um uh, compliance to uh, re regulations standards and rest again it is very important very key if you are not if your product are, are not close of you crossing the border so again those are things that every businessman or every person must be able to identify most again most importantly again is of course to develop a market trend monitoring uh, system where, where regularly these businesses uh, do uh, analysis trend, consumer behavior, and economic indicators, then you begin to know where do I run to? Should I have any problem? And then I think my last point will be, of course, uh, there's always very good import. I mean, for me, uh, what I've learned in South Africa, there's this customer relationship management that businesses do follow. They try to manage their customers. They ensure that the, the, these customers become their loyal customers and they are satisfied with their businesses. So sometimes even when your prices, are, I mean, when your, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the valuability of Naira is affecting your businesses, you know that you have a customer that is out there looking out for you. Like the, the Stalin bag will say, one customer, one banking. I thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Edike. Oh, we are so happy that we got you at last to speak. Your <laughs> contributions are really, really powerful. Thank you so very much. Technical team, are you ready? Um, sorry, before the technical team, so that we don't lose it in the fray of uh, the next um, interview. Um, let me start from the last. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you so, so, so much for those very punchy, very punchy things. There is something called market exploration. 
Exploration is the beginning of expedition. What we did in Gambia, what we proposed to uh, Smedan and NEPC was actually a market expedition where you take it to them. And that we are victims of it. Nigeria is subjected to it because you find, if you go to a co-hotel today, the market there that has become a permanent exhibition site was actually an emergency response to a team from India that came, I think about uh, 18 years ago, that brought their producers with uh, rugs and what have you, and the um, Eco Hotel did not have enough room, so they quickly set up that, uh, 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 what they call it, Namaki. And the guys from India found so much market that they called for more from home. So they stayed in the co hotel for more than one month, selling Asian rocks and Asian products to Nigeria. And of course, they didn't go back to India with Naira. So it was just such a thing that um, uh, uh, our Your, Your Excellency Abu Dali is proposing there. So if I were NEPC, for example, as of today, I will weave my strategy around such expeditions to proven markets. Sudan is there. Take Nigerian plastic industry to Sudan. Take detergents and soaps to Sudan. Not even as far as South Africa. Go to Gambia. Go to... Uh, uh, I'm trying to see where we are, we are going to avoid the challenge of language. Go to uh, Liberia. Stay there. Support exporters to be there for one month and see just how much, not only on the spot sales, but the after partnerships that will be developed. And I still, based still on that, I want to say that it is time. And I was more than happy to hear that finally the Orosaye report is going to now be implemented. We have Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency. It is not out of place to have a Nigeria Investment and Export Promotion Agency. And how will this work? I have been advocating more than for 15 years that it is possible to make Nigeria an industrial outpost. An industrial outpost simply means that the foreign direct investment that is coming in to be encouraged and supported to produce in Nigeria for export. And that is what I want to relate to answering Alaji Gambo uh, earlier uh, suggestion. The truth is that some of these incentives existed they are still in existence. Duty drawback scheme will the down the uh, lower side of the uh, value chain that Alaji Gambo was talking about to bring in raw materials at zero, uh, zero duty or at best pay duty and get your duty back as long as you are using that raw material to produce for export. It exists. There was a time in Nigeria when we had the manufacture in bond scheme. And the manufacture in bond scheme actually made a provision for importers to import even items that were banned, as long as such items were going to be used to produce, and 100% of what is going to be produced is re exported immediately, all aimed at shoring the uh, value of the Naira. Today, I believe these suggestions are still relevant. I pause for now. Thank you so very much, uh, Femi Boyede. This webinar is brought to you by Talking Trade and Investment Global, Patrick. We are live on Facebook at Export Digest. Kindly follow our Facebook page. Also, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter at Export Digest TV. Okay, thank you so much. As we promised, we are getting to the end and uh, normally we finish by 12.30, Toronto time, which will be your own 6.30.
However, we started about 15 minutes late today. So bear with us. We are looking at rounding this up, not too long from now. We promise that the first two people that uh, join us today would have the opportunity to pitch their businesses to the audience. Instead of two, we had three because there is a tie. So the first three people to join us today were Adola Ogunshaki, Ore, I don't have your last name now, but Ore, and uh, Madame Bosu. <laughs> Okay, Madam uh, Bosun. Yes, good evening. It's good to be back again. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Bosun Sholari. I am the CEO and founder of Dasu Integrated Farms Limited. We trade under two trade names, Booster for our herbal blends and Different Foods for our spices, herbs, and flour. For Booster herbal blends, we have about 10 variants of teas, that work for various health conditions. We don't need to uh, keep swallowing those chemical tablets for those conditions. Right from COVID era, people have had to go through so much. Now, disposable income keeps dwindling. So we don't need to keep any money for the hospital. Take Booster Harbor Blend teas every day, and that's your plug for you to remain healthy, your wellness is assured through that. And then doing that one, we're looking for distributors, we're looking for sales outlets in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Should you have the uh, opportunity or you have the finances, you want to talk to us, we're available on 0803 496 111 10 and then our email is www. Our website is www.integratedfarmslimited.com.ng. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice to have you as usual. Uh, yes, I see the message from... Uh... Hello? Hello, can I come in? Please come yeah. in. Okay. Um... Good evening once again to everyone. I am Mr. Oe Charles Dewey. I am the CEO of Oe Agro Industries Limited. Am I being heard? Very well, please. Uh, just okay. one moment. Uh, one moment. Um, technical team. Okay. Thank you. I can see now. Go ahead, please. All right. Um. We are a company that um, process um, pepper, that is uh, chili pepper. And um, we are very, very conscious of the hygiene. And um, we use uh, stainless steel to process our pepper into powder. And um, you can contact us for plantain chips as well. And um, our contact lines are 081-35-06-7839. Thank you very much. That's all we can say for now. We're grateful for this opportunity. And uh, the next person was unable to unmute himself. Are you able to unmute yourself now? Just one second. I'm trying to if, if if he can't, I would uh, try to help by explaining that I had an interaction with Mr. Ogusaki a few weeks back. He is actually the team lead for a project, uh, an agriculture and uh, agro export project, Lighthouse Foods, and um, this is one of those companies that I really would have loved uh, to share experiences here. Because even before the volatility of the uh, Naira, uh, Mr. Obunshakin's project, um, first and foremost, was challenged with uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it, kidnapping and hostages and having to dodge and uh, developing himself into a mercenary uh, to procure, uh, gone to protect himself and all of those things. Those are challenges that Nigerian companies 
especially the ones uh, waiting to start up are facing. It would have been very, very interesting to, uh, to hear how they overcame this and for them to also pitch what they expect that uh, the kind of support that they accept, uh, expect that would have uh, kept them afloat. Okay. I hope um, I did some uh, good representation. I will send my invoice later. Thank you so very much. So as we are rounding up, there is a, a comment on the chat. Uh, it says, uh, our fundamental problem, it seems to me, is that since the First Republic, there has never been a robust, all-encompassing, sustainable economic fundamentals for our country. Government since the end of the Civil War has always been fashioned in the image of whomever was at the at the M at any given time. This is a comment from uh, Mr. Femi Odere, the senior legislative aide to the Senate President on stakeholders' engagement and mobilization. Uh, he has not been able to unmute himself or put on his camera either. Thank you very much for your contribution. And um, Adiola Ogusha came to everyone. Are you able to unmute yourself now? You are the last person. Are you able to unmute yourself? I have sent I just you... saw a comment from him. What did he say? He said because I still I... can't unmute. Which is unfortunate. No, I couldn't. Unfortunately. Okay, yeah, you can I'm just good. write on the chat. Okay. We will know too for next time then. And uh, Trevor has spoken. I got a message from uh, uh, the technical team. Yes, he has spoken already. I believe we are coming to the end of this program today. And um, I actually believe that um, we should uh, still bring up some of uh, this. There was a comment on the RT FX policy. And there is a comment, uh, uh, Dr. Akonji mentioned the challenges in uh, transporting goods, uh, especially um, within Africa which also goes to one of the issues that John Isemede raised. Is Nigeria actually ready for the AFCFTA? Are we ready to participate? So in response to this, again, I want to put it out there. It's not as if we have the authorities here who can um, give us an answer immediately. But there's a project that Nigeria began and uh, spearheaded under the then managing director of uh, Nexim Bank, Robert Oria. The Steel Link project was so beautiful that it was adopted by ECOWAS as the solution to the logistic challenge of moving uh, goods across West and Central Africa. Nexim Bank spearheaded this. It was officially inaugurated in Accra. I was there. And then um, somehow, somehow, we only hear about the cries and challenges of uh, moving goods across. You, you won't believe that from Nigeria to Gambia, by truck, it takes 91 days. If you drive your own car in three days, you are in Banjo. 91 days, some of the goods would have expired. So we think that it is time for uh, the current administration to look at providing a logistic solution. It will not only serve Nigeria, it will serve the entire uh, uh, sub-region and help again to reposition the country for CFGA. The RTFX policy was developed, introduced, administered, disbursed, and everything by the then CBN governor, MFLA, until today, nobody knows the qualifying criteria or the list, comprehensive list of those that CBN said they paid up to 1 trillion naira to as a bonus under the RTFX 200. So it is time for government 
RTFX 200 is very, 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 uh, uh, what we call it, um, relevant. If it is properly designed, if it has a legal backing, just like the export expansion grant has a legal backing, there is the possibility of government looking at setting up a review team, a technical team, to fuse one into the other, to revisit or review or modify or upgrade the export expansion grant. I, I keep mentioning export expansion grant because it is the only one that has been functioning among the 18 or so in incentives that um, uh, uh, the federal government under Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida introduced at that time. And I think Thank on you, this sir. note that I would, uh, I don't know if I've missed talking, uh, answering anybody, but I think we should uh, uh, pause it here. And Lady K, if you want. Um, we have just one more person, and then uh, we round up finally. And that is uh, no other person than uh, Jackson Ibinosa. Jackson, please uh, uh, unmute yourself, and if you can, uh, if we can see your video. That would be nice. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to come on video now. But Lady K, thank no you problem. for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Mr. Olufemi Boyede, uh, it's uh, about 1 p.m. here. I don't know where you are on the surface of the earth, but good afternoon from Toronto, Canada. I want to specially thank you uh, for that insightful uh, presentation. We talked about uh, uh, some of the export challenges uh, as well as uh, the Naira with uh, volatility. Uh, thank you so very much for that. Uh, but Mr. Boyede, I know you are, you are uh, a man that... Uh, that maintains um, uh, um, residence in two countries currently, Canada and Nigeria. And I know you're a lot involved in um, assisting Nigerian agri producer to assess the Canadian market. Uh, Why well, I appreciate the fact that this may not be the topic of today, but I didn't hear you mention the support mechanism uh, that I am very well aware of that you're providing um uh, exporters and would be exporters to for example canada with a view of standardization quality and the rest you know in assessing the canadian market for the agri product and um yeah so that's just uh what i wanted to uh to flag off and uh, flag up and uh, thank you so very much for that very brilliant presentation and to you lady k thank you for the excellent moderation thank you so very much Thank you. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Thank you so much. Uh, at, this, at this junction, we're about to round up. So, um, Mr. Femboyede, can you please round up at this stage? Yeah, I think all that is left is to thank everybody. Of course, like you said, when my head starts bending, we can sleep here today talking about this subject. But I will uh, let me try and see if I can straighten my neck so that uh, we can round up. I want to say a very, very big thank you to all of you for your patience and for your very insightful uh, contributions. And, um, uh, and I crave your indulgence for you all to join me in appreciating the most wonderful team anybody can ever wish for, the Talking Trade and Investment Global Team. And to let you know that we are here for the long term to give you um, all the support. Uh, talking trade and investment global, it is deliberate. Um, I cannot take the Nigerian out of me. Neither can any of those of us who are operating the, in the diaspora. I think that 99% uh, of the membership of this team are actually um, Nigerians in the diaspora, and they have, because of this passionate love for Nigeria, they are operating from different countries of the world, from Sweden, from the United Kingdom, from Canada, and um, we all believe that Nigeria can be turned around. Tatrick is a Canada registered not for profit, and it's uh, incorporated in Canada but with its view on the entire world. 
And so we want to assure you that your views are valued and will continue to be. And I want once again to uh, thank the uh, wonderful Talking Trade and Investment Global Team and to uh, wish you all well until we come your way again in the very near future. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much, uh, Femi Boye Day. And uh, this is the technical team behind the scene. Can you see my? Can you see my screen? I'm sharing my screen at this moment. I believe so. Can yes, you see my can. screen? Yes, oh, yes, we okay. can. Yes, we so can. we have Femi Boye Hello, Day. Day. Yes, please. You saying something? Hello. No, yeah, we can see your screen. That's why he says that. Oh, okay. I see. So just one moment. Um, then let me add pin. And uh, I'm going to just um, just trying to round up here. I'm sharing my screen to acknowledge the wonderful team that has been working behind this team. Um, of course, you know Femi Boye Deo is a host at the convener. We have um, Dr. Olu Taiwo, Director of IT and Website, all the way from uh, London, England. Aruna Ibrahim is the project manager, he's a Nigerian Canadian. She had a bot, uh, is technical support, Sweden. Adebot Oluato Mimi is uh, Joseph, is technical support from Nigeria. And of course, you have me, Kemi Amushan Lady K that has been talking all along. At this time, is it possible for us to put on our cameras? As usual, let's take our picture. We have not taken our picture for the month. I reserved it to the last. One moment, I'm bringing everybody in. Please turn on your camera, let's take our picture. This is the first picture of the year. Okay, I can see Femi Boye there adjusting his glasses to look better. No, no one else is marrying you. You already have a wife, so. <laughs> and that you are just At what point should we say cheese? <laughs> <laughs> At what point? Okay. Yes, Madam Omolara Koji, wonderful to see your face again. Okay. Abunda Ali, oh, we see your face today. Praise God. <laughs> That's nice. Technical team, are you taking the pictures? <laughs> this is wonderful. Yes, and don't forget, uh, if you have not sent uh, put your information on the chat, you can please put your information. And, um, oh, all along we have not acknowledged those on Facebook and YouTube. Sorry about that. We acknowledge you. We thank you for joining us also. Please put your comments. And uh, have a very wonderful month. As we said earlier, this is the first one this year. So have a very wonderful year. Till we meet again next month. May God bless you all. Bless you too. Bless you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to be here again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.